Hello? <laughs> Hi everybody and welcome to my channel. Today I am filming an inventory video and I look like this. So I'm hiding off camera. I don't know why I felt the urge to show you. I'm just living real life right now here in my apartment filming YouTube videos with my makeup, playing with my makeup, doing my thing, you know? So we're gonna show you all of my makeup that I own right now. We can't do it this way. Hold on. Hello everybody and welcome to my carpet in my living room. I'm gonna go through every single item in my makeup collection in different categories and compare my numbers with this year versus where I was at last year. I have been on a low buy over the past couple years as well as trying to pan a lot of my makeup items which is the whole point of this YouTube journey and I'm trying to reduce my makeup inventory. Well, I wasn't as strict this year as I maybe hoped to have been but all the same, I think I made some progress. Let's go ahead and get into this video. I love inventory videos and I'm assuming you do too. So buckle in, it's gonna be a long one. And of course, we'll start in the order that we apply our makeup, we'll start with our primers. Oh yeah, and don't forget to thumbs up this video and hit that subscribe button. Is it over here? Is it over here? I don't know, I'm sure you can find it. But subscribe to this channel if you're not already so you can follow along on all of my makeup projects and progress over the next year or even longer. I don't know, I don't know how long I'll be here in this space, but check me out. I have a picture in picture in this lower left corner here of all of my different categories from last year so you can compare them visually. This is my primer category. Last year I had just one primer, which was pretty surprising. I've since finished that primer and now have four primers in my collection, which is more than I would like to have, but they're all serving different purposes, so I'm not really mad about that. So first we have the L'Oreal Magic Perfecting Base. This is a drugstore pore filling primer that I just love. It's my favorite one I found for the best price, so really happy to have that. And I rarely use this really just for special occasions or when I want my makeup to look extra, extra good. I reach for that, but not on a daily basis. Then we have my e.l.f. Power Grip Primer. This is a great primer for helping your makeup to wear longer. It's really, really sticky. I just recently got this in the past couple months and I've already used quite a bit of it. You can see a little squeeze in there and really enjoying it. I think it does help my makeup to last and gives a nice sticky base to your foundation and the powders and I'm happy to have brought this in. Of course, as soon as I bought this, they launched the one with the niacinamide in it. It looks like a pink gel instead of a green gel and I kind of wish I'd gotten that because I love niacinamide but I'm really happy to be using this and it has a great purpose in my collection. This I'm counting as a primer. It's kind of debatable. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter in the sample size. I just recently picked this up from Sephora with their 20% off sale and I have been loving it. It makes me really want to try the e.l.f. version of it, which I think I will purchase once I go through this, but I'm really trying to hold off on that item until I get through this one. But I'm loving how it makes my makeup look. It does give such an inner glow. And I'm really hopeful I can enjoy the same experience with that budget e.l.f. item. And lastly, I have this one from Smashbox. This one I got in a gift bag from Ulta. It was like a gift with purchase. And this is their Photo Finish Control Mattifying Primer. So I'm not a big mattifying primer person, but for the summertime, I think this will definitely be useful. And it's such a small amount, I can go through this. So that one is new as well, but not anything I purchased. I purchased all three of these this year, I suppose. And if you're interested in seeing my 2022 purchases, I will link that video in the cards and you can see all of the makeup I bought and how much I spent on it. So for primers, we went from one all the way up to four, plus three in that category, but that's okay. These are all different purposes and I think I will definitely be getting my use of them throughout the year. Next category are my foundations. Here's how many I had last year. I had three that I was working on. I'm happy to say that all three of those foundations have been emptied and used up, and I now have three new foundations in my collection. So the first one I picked up was the Kosas one. This one is expiring soon in July, so I'm really gonna be digging into this one in the spring and summer months and try to get it used up before it expires. It's just the SPF in there that will expire, but I've heard that this one can kind of go bad and start causing some irritation. So that one's gonna be a focus pretty soon, but I do enjoy the finish on it. It doesn't last all day, but I'm okay with that for just like a daily foundation. I'd rather it have a nice look on the skin for like the few hours that I really need it to. And then, you know, at the end of my day, I don't really care that much for most days. Next, we have the Ordinary Primer. This one I got for free. It was like a gift with purchase from Ulta if you spent so many dollars on the Ordinary products, which I do love. And this is a full coverage foundation, yeah, high coverage, 
it's like kind of a matte formula and I actually really like it. It's not the best foundation, but for a free product, it does a good job and it saved me some money in that arena and allowed me to purchase this next one. I mean, these are both high-end expensive foundations that I purchased this year. This is the Clinique Even Better Clinical Foundation. This has SPF 25. It's a very full coverage, pretty mattifying. It lasts very, very well throughout the day, but this shade is a little bit deep for me and it'll be better suited for me in the summer months. So I haven't gotten much use on this yet, but the few times I have worn it, I've really, really enjoyed it. Or I heard such good things about it that I really, really wanted to try it. So happy that I picked that one up. I do like Clinique as a brand. I wish they were cruelty free, alas. So there you have it. I went from three to three. I'm happy that that category at least stayed the same over the past year. Here we have my concealer collection. Last year I had four concealers and this year I'm up to six. So I went up two in this category. But again, I have some good excuses for my spending behavior. So this is the only concealer that I had last year at this time, my Too Faced Born This Way concealer. I'm currently working on panning this concealer so it'll be gone soon. The other three I've since used up. I replaced my color corrector with this one from Charlotte Tilbury. This is their peachy apricot color corrector and is it worth the extra money you pay for it? Um, maybe only for the packaging, but my Pixie one served me just fine for a third of the price. I also have this one from Shiseido. This also had so much hype and quite the price tag to go along with it. And honestly, it doesn't live up to the hype for me. It's like a 30 some dollar concealer, I believe, and it's fine, but nothing that like, you know, has changed my life. I also brought in this e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer after hearing a lot about it. I haven't gotten much use on this one yet. It's, again, a little bit of a deeper shade. So this will come into my life in the summer months when I have more of a tan. I also picked up this white concealer just for fun. I think I had like a really good coupon and I thought this would be a useful thing to have in my collection for lightening, you know, maybe this concealer or that foundation that I was just talking about that's a little deep for me. And also, if I'm ever doing a white base makeup for like a special effects or Halloween look, then this will be really useful for those kinds of looks as well. And then lastly, again, due to the hype, I picked up the NYX Bear With Me Concealer Serum and I really do love this. I think it looks beautiful on the under eye and I'm really happy to have brought this into my collection. So we have a couple more concealers this year, but concealer is something that I really go through quickly. So I'm not too worried about that. And I think I should be set for concealer for the rest of the year. Here we have my loose powders, and while it looks like three, it's actually only two. Last year, I had four loose powders, and I'm happy to say that I was able to use up two of those, and these remaining loose powders are the same that I had last year. So this is the Cody Airspun. This is the translucent one. This is a classic. You know, the smell really gets to some people. It doesn't bother me much, and for the price, it performs really well. So I'll definitely be using that throughout the year, and it'll probably last me into next year. I don't really use loose powder much anymore, at least not right now in my makeup routine. If I do run out of this this year, I'll probably repurchase something new just for fun to kind of try something else. This is the RCMA No Color Powder. Wow, I've had this for years. It's actually getting to be quite low in there. It'd be great to finish this soon and maybe bring it into a project pan. We'll see. And this here is actually also the RCMA Color Powder or No Color Powder. This is what I bring with me to travel. So I count this as one item because it came from this bottle. We went from four loose powders down to two. That's two. So that's another category we went down in and that is great. So these are my finishing powders. Last year I had three finishing powders. I used up that Mineral Veil from Bare Minerals and I still have the same two from Hourglass. So this one here is their Dim Light and I'm working on hitting pan on this this year. Wish me luck. It's gonna be slow going, but at least we are seeing some use on it now. And then this one is the Diffuse Light, my absolute favorite, as you can tell, and I'm hoping to have this one finished this year. So finally, maybe more of a change in this category next year in 2024, something to look forward to. So we went from three to two, again, down one. So I'm hoping we can continue this trend as we move through the inventory.
These are my pressed powders. Last year I had three, and this year I have, I think all of the same three. Um, no, one of them I finished up. So last year I had the Makeup Forever powder foundation. I since used that up and have been using this component to house the Makeup Revolution powder foundation, which is also seen in that clip. So I have that here now in my compact repressed because that packaging broke. And then I did repurchase a new Makeup Forever powder foundation to replace the other one because I love this. This is my on the go touch up makeup and it is amazing for that purpose. I have the same powder from number seven as last year, but this year I have an incredible pan on it. So this will be empty really soon, definitely within the year. I use this to set my under eyes and my T-zone most days. And then one other new powder in here is this one from LYS. This is their translucent setting powder, I believe. Yes, no, yes, yeah, the resilience shade, which is their translucent shade. And first of all, how fun is the packaging here? And this is a really fine setting powder, beautiful for under the eye. And this is what I'll be using after I finish up that number seven. So we went from three to four, up one, but we'll be done with two of these very, very soon. Here are my bronzers currently. Last year I had six bronzers and I'm happy to say that two of those have since been moved out of my collection, completely used up. A hula bronzer from Benefit as well as the one from Pure that had the broken packaging, I don't know, the Pure Mineral Glow bronzer or something like that. So I still have the same butter bronzers from last year. These are basically brand new. I think I've used this one 15 times in my deck of panning project linked here. And this one, the lighter shade is just a backup for, you know, when I move through more of my bronzers. Here we have my Tarte Park Avenue Princess. This one, I have a goal of hitting pan on this year. It doesn't have much use on it at all, but it deserves it. And then this one from Hourglass. I love this bronzer. I have pan on it and it's kind of been sitting by the wayside for the past couple of years. I haven't given it much use since hitting pants, so maybe I'll bring that into a project soon. And then this is a new bronzer for me, the only new bronzer for the year, so that feels good. This is from NARS, and it's their cream bronzer. This is the Laguna Cream Bronzer in the shade two, the original shade. I love this bronzer. It is a very welcome addition to my collection and currently the only cream bronzer I have. I did have a liquid bronzer category, but I happily used up that one liquid bronzer I had, so we're just gonna now condense to one category of bronzers because I'm definitely not purchasing any liquid bronzers probably ever again in my life. So this cream bronzer is great and loving having that addition in my collection. And even then with purchasing a new bronzer, we went from six down to five and I'm so happy about that. And I'm not sure yet, but I might decide to change how I'm counting products and categorizing them and decide to separate all of these individual pans in the face palette. So if I do decide to do it that way, I'm gonna count this shade here, the Sculpt shade, which is a bronzing shade as a bronzer and call my total bronzers six bronzers for this year. I'm gonna to have to just compare my math that way and let you know what my change in numbers is based on what I categorized last year versus what my numbers are based on my categories and how I separate products this year. I'm getting ahead of myself here. We also have a liquid highlight category, which this is the only surviving item from that category since my last update. Hi, baby. <laughs> Butter. He likes this highlight, as you can see. I like it too. It's from Cover FX. I got this in a boxy charm and it actually looks beautiful. It's pretty deep, so I like this all over the body. And that's how I used up the other liquid highlights that are now gone from my collection. So I'll be happy to reach for this in the summer months. Maybe I'm going on vacation, maybe I'm showing a little skin, and this will be a fun way to just add a little shimmer and sparkle to my body. And I'm happy to say I only have one item in this category now. I might decide to group this with my other highlighters. We'll see. But either way, I went from two items down to one in that category. For face palettes, we went from two face palettes down to one. And I was kind of weird with how I chose to name face palettes versus blush palettes. Regardless, last year I had that e.l.f. cream contour palette. And as many of you probably know from following my project pan, I used up that entire palette over the course of a little bit more than a year. So we went from two to one. And for face palettes, I think that's huge. This face palette has five shades in it still. You just got a little peek of it, but it has that one bronzer and then four highlight shades. So we'll count this as one so we can compare our items from last year from two to one in this category. But I think moving forward, I'll be counting this as that one bronzer shade and then four highlights. 
My next category was blush palettes and they went from four down to three, which also I think is a huge accomplishment when we're talking about blush. So that palette that I moved out of my inventory was the Becca Afterglow palette. Again, that was part of my Project Pan and it had highlighters and blush in it, but I went ahead and counted it as a blush palette. We'll count these as three blush palettes, again, down from that one, but if we're counting individual blushes, then we would include four. Oh, and then there's eight in here, that's 12. And then this one, funny story, came with me to Vegas and true to form, she had a little too much of a good time and came back a little, um, a little haggard. So dropped her on the ground. She shattered my two favorite shades, shattered, hit the ground, or they didn't hit the ground, they were contained. But they shattered and were completely not able to stay in this palette anymore. But this one little purple shade survived and I've saved it in this palette just because it's so unique in my collection. But should I really count this as a palette anymore when it has one shade remaining? Probably not. So I think I am definitely going to separate these out into my blush category. But, you know, just to compare again from this year to last year, we have three blush palettes remaining. Here is my current blush collection. Last year, I counted 19 individual blushes. I got rid of a few of those blushes in a recent declutter and just throughout the year. And I also have acquired a few new blushes. I'm currently sitting at 20 individual blushes, if I'm counting correctly. So we've gone up one in this category. That's okay with me. Blush is my favorite category, as you might be able to tell. I love playing with different tones of blush and seeing what different kinds of effects I can get. I have two cream blushes lumped in here. This one is new for from Rare Beauty and I've played with it a couple times. It's really beautiful. I'm going to die for this in the spring and summer months. Can't wait to get use on that one. And then the same one from last year. This one I actually used a hundred times in the last year. So at least I have a little bit of a dent going in it. I almost decluttered this, but I'm gonna let it hang out for a little bit longer. Why not? We have three from Hourglass. This is one of my favorite blush formulas. I have Mood Exposure. This one has a nice little dent going on it. This one is Radiant Magenta. I really like like this it's quite unique in my collection and this one is definitely one of my favorites diffused heat i reach for this all the time i also have a new cover fx blush i actually replaced the one i had last year the shade was not working for me so that went to a friend and this shade warm honey is much much better suited for my preferences really have been loving that one this sample from tarte hasn't gotten any love this past year but this is something that i could see myself trying to pan at some point just for fun since it's so small this was a gift from sephora when you became a vib rouge after for spending a thousand dollars in a year i know thanks sephora but it's a pretty shade and it's kind of different from other things i have this is a sample from the balm and i don't even remember getting this but i really like it and it's a really pretty and easy shade and great for travel so that's another one i could see myself emptying at some point this was from nyx that i had depotted it is old 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 but i love having a bright orange blush in my collection it is such a fun thing to play with for halloween for costumes for fun summer looks i just think it's a fun color to play with I have two from Makeup Geek. This is the shade XOXO. I love Makeup Geek's blush formula and I'm happy to have two of them. This is the shade Chivalry and this is a really nice kind of like terracotta nude brownie blush. Love that. This was a BoxyCharm acquisition. It is the brand Note and it's the shade Desert Rose, a really pretty like apricot orange. A classic in everybody's collection is the Milani Luminoso. I've had this one for years and you can see I've worn down that dome quite a bit. A staple in any makeup lover's collection. I love that one. This one's new. This is from ColourPop and it's one of their Super Shock blushes. My first time trying this formula. I love this. Can I just, I'm not going to swatch all these, but like how pretty that is like for a fun just little pop of metallic purple on the cheeks i mean you may think i'm crazy but i think it's really fun this is also a new purchase from ColourPop. this is a really deep shade of blush it's called forever yours i love this packaging and this is really fun for a bright pop of color on the cheeks this blush from milani has been on the chopping block for years but i like that it's kind of like a bronzy coral really fun for the summertime it's just not something i reach for on a regular basis and i don't typically like these separated colors but when it's all mixed together it is pretty and same i just like this shade a lot it's pretty unique in my collection this like peach kind of fluorescent coral i, I love the rose 
imprint on it, also from Milani. This is the shade Coral Cove. This one I picked up this year from Wet n Wild. This is their Care Bear Collection, Do What You Love. I don't know if that's the shade of the blush it is. And it's just a really pretty easy bubblegum pink and the heart embossing on there is almost gone. So you can see I've gotten some love on it. And it's just a fun one to look at in my collection. It's nothing special. This one is from Vintage, I think, no, Vulgar Beauty. Do they even still have this brand anymore? Pretty Vulgar. And this was a BoxyCharm one as well, but it's a really pretty dusty rose color and I like that formula, all right. So I think that's all of my blushes that I talked about. So we can count 20 individual blushes, including my liquid blushes, but let's do a new count with my blushes in my blush palette. So I also have eight blushes here, four on this side, four on this side, these two are highlights, so eight, and then I have that singular blush in there. And then we have four blushes in this blush palette from e.l.f. And I am panning this blush palette this year, just trying to see how much of it I can use in the next 12 months. So that's eight plus four is 12, plus one more is 13. So let's count that as 33 individual blushes, a new way of counting. We did go up one in our previous count, but we went down in our blush palette count. So, you know, kind of balances out. Okay, everybody, here are my individual highlighters. So it looks a little bit different from last year. I had six individual highlighters last year that I was counting. I decluttered one of them, which was a dual pan, that vintage by Jessica Liebeskin. It's gown, it was no bueno anymore. I have the same three from Becca. This is Prosecco Pop, Champagne Pop, and Opal. My big old pan in Opal, love to see it. And then I have this one from Ofra. This is in Rodeo Drive. This probably the sparkliest highlighter I have. This one's also a repeat from last year. This is the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter, a very subtle highlighter in my collection. Not one I really reach for. I'd like to get more use on that one and see if I even still like it. And then this is a new addition. This is repressed into my Charlotte Tilbury packaging. This is their powder compact packaging. And in here are mixed up the remains of my two blushes from my Hourglass palette. These two here, the peachy one and the more nude one. So they're mixed together and they're so shimmery that I went ahead and put them in my highlighter collection. That's realistically what I'm gonna use this for. It's not pigmented to serve as a blush for my preference. So I'm gonna count that as one highlight. So we stayed the same from six last year to six this year. Now let's grab in those highlighters from the other palettes. I have two shades from my Tarte Party Wheel, and then I also have those four highlight shades from my Tarte's Pro To Go palette. You see Butter sitting here with us. He just wants his little nose in there. So when we count those all together, we have the six individual, these four pans to make 10, and then two more to make 12. 12 pans of highlighter, and that's how we'll count them moving forward, I think. You approve, Butter? These are my eyeliner pencils. Last year I had six and this year I'm down to four. I used up one eyeliner pencil entirely, the Bare Minerals Lasting Line pencil, and I decluttered the Rimmel Scandalized pencil in the nude shade. And the remaining four are the same I had last year. So we have this one from Urban Decay. This is their Glide On 24-7 formula. It's like a really pretty electric blue and a great staple in my collection. I've had this for years and it still performs beautifully. This is from L'Oreal. This is their Silkissimi line, a great option for colored eyeliner at the drugstore. It's a really pretty olive shade. I said this last year and I'm gonna say it again. I would love to get some use on this pencil. I always forget to grab for it, but I think it would be beautiful with my green eyes. This is a eyeliner from Ulta. I probably got this for free. It's their gel eyeliner. It works beautifully. I like to use this when I'm taking a break from my liquid eyeliner all over my upper lash line to just really darken up that lash line, thicken it up, and it's beautiful. It lasts, it goes on easy, I really like it. And lastly, I have this brown liner from L'Oreal. This is their Pencil Perfect. It's one of the twist up eyeliners in the shade Espresso. I like having a brown eyeliner in my collection. I used to use it to darken my mole on my lip, which I don't really do anymore because my mole has gotten to be quite large and doesn't really look cute anymore. So uh, this one doesn't get a lot of use in my collection these days, but I could see myself reaching for brown eyeliners more. I'm trying to have more just natural looking makeup days, especially for work, and this would be a good option for that. Overall, we went down two and didn't purchase any, and that is great. From pencil liners to liquid liners, 
Last year I had four liquid eyeliners that I was working on and now we are down to just the one. And this is one of my favorites. This is the Tattoo Liner from KVD Beauty. I love this liner. It's my favorite high-end liner that I've ever tried and I've repurchased it over and over again. I often get it on sale as I did this one. I think I got it half off for the 21 Days of Beauty at Ulta, something like that. And it is just amazing. I love it. It works perfectly for me. Also, I love the NYX Epic Ink. I normally would have that in this inventory as well, but I just used up my last pen of it and haven't repurchased it. I'm kind of on a no-buy for the month of January informally, really try not to purchase anything unnecessarily, but that's something I will be bringing into my collection soon once I get low on this one. So there you have it from four to one. I think that's pretty darn good. Next category, I mean, should this even be a category? These are my cream gel liners. I have two, the same two I had last year. So this one is from ColourPop. This is their colored one. This is the shade Fast Lane. It's like a emerald green color. And this one, I keep saying again, I'm gonna reach for, I'm gonna get use on it. And I keep forgetting about it. I need to bring this into a project. Hopefully this will be the year for the ColourPop gel liner. I can play with some fun green shades. I don't think I would be able to make a wing out of this at the point it's in now. It still is creamy enough from every time I test it, I say like, okay, if it's dried out, I'm gonna get rid of it, but it's not dried out. So we're gonna keep it one more year. It's a really pretty shade. There it is. And you can see it's pretty unique shade. And I think I could really have some fun with it if I just would apply myself here and there. Anyways, that one's gonna stay. Obviously, this isn't a declutter video. It's an inventory video, which brings us to this one from Pretty Vulgar. This is like kind of designed like an ink well, which is really fun. Um, this one is pretty thick at this point, but it's so good for like blocking out the eye for Halloween makeup. It's still pretty creamy, creamy enough for me to use it. And this one again, hasn't dried up, so we're gonna keep it around. It comes in handy sometimes when I need it and I'm happy I have it for those occasions. So at least the category stayed the same from two to two. Next category is mascara. I had three mascaras at this time last year and of course I've long since gone through all of those as well as probably other mascaras that you're not seeing here. But at this moment in time, I have three mascaras. I probably actually have four. Let me put a little caveat there. I have the CoverGirl, I forget the name. It's in the teal packaging. It's one of my favorite drugstore mascaras and it has gone missing. I cannot find it. I used it on my lashes a couple days ago. It's gone. I've looked underneath my desk in all my drawers. I don't know what happened to it. So if I find it, then I'll count this as four mascaras. But for now, and up until the time that I edit this video, if I, it doesn't come up, I have three mascaras in my collection. This one I opened just recently. This is from Ico. It's their Black Magic Mascara. Dang, this mascara shows up. Like it goes to work and the brush on it is really big and fluffy and it just really coats your lashes. It's kind of hard to take it off, but it lasts really well too. So I'm excited to have started trying that one. At least that's one advantage of my other mascara disappearing. It was getting a little bit old anyways, but it had at least a couple more weeks of life left in it. I haven't gotten over it obviously, but let's move on. I have two from It Cosmetics. This is my favorite high-end mascara that I've tried. I got this on sale. It was half off or like buy one, get one free or something like that, where I only paid $13 for each of those tubes. And that's when I stock up on this mascara, obviously when it's on sale, that's the way to go. So in summary, I have three mascaras, the same number as last year, maybe four, maybe four, but with one on its way out the door. Last year I had two brow products and this year I have three. I have this one from e.l.f. This is their ultra precise brow pencil. I picked this up on sale. So it was about $2. Wanted to give it a try. And this is the it Cosmetics Brow Power. This was in my inventory last year, but I'm pretty close to using this one up. So that e.l.f. one was purchased as a backup for this one. I also recently picked up the ABH Dip Brow. This is the shade um, Soft Brown, I believe. And I got this for half off from Ulta. It's $14 that I got it for. And there's so much product in here. I knew that that $14 was a very good value. It's already a good value full price for this product. So I went ahead and picked it up knowing that it would last me a very long time and I wouldn't have to spend money on brow products for this foreseeable future. So I went up one item in this category, but these ones are gonna last us throughout the year, no doubt. 
The next category was brow mascara. So I went from one brow mascara last year up to three. And these are all new purchases in my inventory. This one right here is a replacement, not the same product from last year's inventory. I love this brow mascara. It's my all-time favorite at the drugstore. It adds a lot of volume and tint to your brows. I use the shade Brunette. And I wanted to try the e.l.f. Wonder Brow because I'd heard, is it e.l.f. Wow Brow? Wonder, wow. Yeah, the e.l.f. Wow Brow. I heard so much about it. I don't like it as much as the NYX. It has not as much hold, not as much tint, but it's fine. I will use it once I'm done with my NYX one. And then this one I got as a 100 point perk from Sephora. This is the Kosas Air Brow. It's their clear brow mascara, and this will be good to add a hold, especially when I'm using that dip brow or pencil. So we went from one up to three, and I decided to actually combine my brow categories. So moving forward, I'll just count all brow products in one category. Moving forward, we'll start starting off the year with six total brow products. Next we have setting sprays. Last year I had just one setting spray. It was my Stay All Night Microfine Setting Mist from e.l.f. And I still have that setting spray in my collection, but this is a new one. I emptied out the one from last year and repurchased. This one is great for making your makeup last. It's a very good dupe for the Urban Decay Stay All Night or Stay All Day, I guess it is, setting spray, which I also love, but this one is a fraction of the price, but I realized that this one contains denatured alcohol and I shouldn't be using that on a regular basis. It really does dry out my skin, which I already have dry skin. So I decided to purchase a more dewy hydrating setting spray for regular, more frequent use. This is also from e.l.f., their dewy coconut setting mist. It has quite a strong coconut scent, so if you're into that, I wouldn't recommend. And you have to be careful with it. If you over apply, it can make you look shiny, but I think it does help my makeup to meld all together and give a nice little glow to the skin. I just have to be a little bit careful with it. So although we went from one setting spray up to two, these are serving different purposes in my makeup routine. And I'm okay with increasing in that way. Next, I have my lip liner collection. Last year, I had 15 lip liners, and this is a category I've really been trying to reduce over the past several years, slowly but surely, and I'm happy to say that I have done that this year. Now I'm at 12 lip liners, and I'm still trying to get that number down. I'm currently panning this one here from ColourPop and trying to use this red one as much as possible over the next year, as well as this fuchsia one from NYX. So I have five from ColourPop. I have this red shade, bossy, this pinky one, Contempo. This is like a deep burgundy shade. It's called Ellery. This is another red. It's like kind of a more of like an orangey red, I think. This is Frenchy. And then we have, we have this purple grind and this really bright coral, which is kind of on the chopping block. This is Dohi. I have four from NYX. I really like their formula. It's pretty dry, but really long lasting. This is Cabernet. I also have Bloom, this bright pink. I have this orange color called Orange. And then I have a few random ones that I acquired from Boxy Charms, I believe. This is from Chanta Blue. It's called Brown Sugar, a really pretty like, you know, deep brown color. This is from the brand I Am Unique or Real Her. Yeah, Real Her. And it's another fuchsia color. And this one from Urban Decay in the shade Firebird. This is from their Gwen Stefani line. And it's another bright pink. So I think there's definitely some repetition going on here in my lip liner collection, but we are slowly but surely winnowing them down. And I really like wearing lip liners. So there's none here that I am in a big hurry to declutter. And they're so small, they don't take up any space at all. And we still were able to go down to three in this category, didn't bring in anything new. And that is a big win in my book. Here are all of my lip glosses, and there's a few caveats in this category. Last year I had six, and this year I'm up to seven. However, this lip gloss here I had last year, but didn't include it in my inventory because I thought I was going to declutter it and then decided against it. So I technically had seven last year, and I have seven this year. So I'm just gonna leave that number as being the same and just kind of correct my mistake from a whole year ago. So I have four of the Fenty lip glosses in three different formulas. I love this lip gloss. These three were sold as a trio over the holiday and I picked them up. This is their creamy formula, the shade Cupcake. I have one of their glitter formulas. This is Fuchsia Flex, so beautiful. And I have two of their heats. This one was in the trio. This is the shade Fenty Glow Heat. I don't know if that's actually the name, but that's what it says on it. 
and it's a really pretty nude. This one I already had is like an orangey red gloss. My friend Emma gave this to me, my first intro to the Fenty lip gloss, and I love these heat ones. They have a plumping effect, which I enjoy. This one I thought I purchased in 2022. I didn't. I had this in my last year in inventory, so whoopsie. I counted this towards my total money spent in 2022 and I shouldn't have. So this is the Infallible Pro Gloss Plumping Formula. It has some really pretty glitter in it. I've been reaching for this over the past week and it has kind of a weird smell. It smells like flowers, which I don't really enjoy. I can't tell if it's gone bad or not. I've only had it about a year, but I don't know. It smells a little strange to me. Let me know if you've had experience with this gloss and what you think of the smell, if it's supposed to smell like that. And then it almost has like a chemically like perfumey smell. So let me know if you know. I emptied out the other version of this gloss that I had. It was the Apricot Kiss shade. I almost emptied it. I decluttered it in my last Project Pan video, but this is its counterpart. I actually do like this shade a lot more. This is Nude Honey, and I'm gonna try and empty this out this year. We'll see. If I don't empty it out, I'm gonna do my best and declutter it by the end of the year. It doesn't need to be in any longer than that, but I would like to at least give it a chance and give it a little bit of use before I get rid of it. And then I have this gloss here from ColourPop. This is from their Frozen 2 Elsa collection, and it's just like a really glittery, transparent shade. It does add like kind of a bluish sheen to whatever lip you're wearing. It's pretty. I like it. I rarely reach for it, but I'm going to keep it in my collection. It has beautiful packaging and good memories. And we're just going to call this category as staying the same since I forgot to count this one last year or neglected to count it last year. And as I've been panning lip glosses, I'm enjoying them more and more. So I finished three lip glosses over the past year and that feels really good. I grouped these all together as my bullet lipstick category, even though not all of them are bullet lipsticks. I have like one rogue pencil lipstick here, but it's the only pencil lipstick I have. So we're grouping it in with the other lipsticks. Last year I had 22 in my collection and this year I'm down to 18. So that is great. This is another category I've really been trying to focus on, not buying at all, use what I have in my collection and try and get through my inventory before bringing in anything new. I'm really watching for things going bad, but trying to get good use on them and enjoying my collection while I have it. So I have two from Maybelline. I love their lipstick formula. It's a great drugstore option. I have two of the ColourPop lippy pencils. This is in the shade Topanga and Button. I'd love to get a lot of use on these this year and get those out of my collection soon. They are getting old. This one's also from ColourPop, also from that Elsa Frozen 2 collection. I got the whole package deal from my friend as a gift and I just love it. This is such a beautiful shade. I guess I'll go ahead and show it to you I'm gonna tell you how beautiful it is. It's like a really pretty deep. Can you even appreciate the color in this lighting? I don't know. That's why we're not swatching right now. Anyways, it's called Little Snow. This is from a drugstore brand called Pop Beauty. It's a red, and this is the only bullet red, like bright red, I have in my collection. And that's something I'll probably be repurchasing eventually after I winnow down my collection a little bit more. I have this one from CoverGirl that I really love. This is Sultry Sienna. It's a nice like creamy, balmy formula. This one's from Essence. This is a really pretty peach color. It's their matte formula and I do like this formula a lot. I would like to get more use on that shade. This is from the Rimmel Kate Moss line. This is the shade 32, another very kind of peachy coral color. Hopefully I can reach for that more in the next coming year. This is a new one in my collection. I think the only one I've purchased in this category in the past year, this is from e.l.f. This is their Hydrating Lip Balm, I think it's called. Yes, their Hydrating Core Lip Shine. I have the shade Joyful and I love this. It is so great for like a purse shade. It's nice and hydrating. It adds a nice little tint to the lips. It like is a dry lips savior, I'll tell you that. So it's great to have around. It goes over any other nude that you're wearing and just adds a nice little sheen and hydration to it. I would recommend that if you're looking for something that has kind of a weird smell, but if you can put up with the smell, then I recommend. Over here, I have my more high-end lipsticks. This one's from MAC, it came from a BoxyCharm. I have a lot of like fuchsias. Another fuchsia from NARS. This was a, I think, point perk or birthday gift or something like that. It's called Let's Go Crazy, another like hot pink shade. Another hot pink. Again, I have so many hot pinks, but I can't get rid of them. This is from Urban Decay. It's the shade Menace. And I just love the packaging on this. I think this is a really nice formula as well. It could definitely get more use on that. Another one from Urban Decay. This is from the Gwen Stefani line. This is the shade Rocksteady, a nice deep, like maroony red. I need to play with these lipsticks more. Maybe I need to do some kind of like lipstick project on my channel. 
This is the lipstick I'm currently panning from Bite Beauty. This will be my last Bite Beauty shade. Once this one's gone, RIP Bite Beauty. I miss you already. This one is from Lancome. This is a really pretty pink color. I need to wear that one more and probably declutter it soon. Nish, maybe next year. And then I have two from Buxom. This one is so old, but it doesn't smell funky at all. And it's such a unique shade in my collection. So that one's gonna stick around. And then this is a nice, again, hot pink from Buxom. But again, such luxurious packaging, nice magnetic clothes. And we went down by four lipsticks in this category. And overall, that feels great. I'm hoping to reduce that number even more in the coming year. These are what I would consider my cream lipsticks. So anything that's not a liquid lipstick and is in like some kind of tube packaging and it doesn't like dry down like a liquid lipstick would. So that's my loose category that I have made up for myself. So here I have six. Last year I had eight. So I was able to use the other infallible pro matte glosses. I had three other shades all in different shades of nude that I used as much as I possibly could and then decluttered at the end of this year. RIP because I love this formula and I loved those shades. I don't think they even have this same one anymore. They have like the glosses, but not the matte glosses. And this shade, I'm gonna keep around one more year. This is the shade Blushing. It's like a very bright pink, like a rosy pink. And I don't love this shade on me, but it's newer than those other shades were. And I'm just gonna let it hang around for a little bit. These two from Revlon, the Ultra HD Matte Lip Color, I also just love and adore this formula. But these are my replacements for those other shades that I was using as much as I can. I'm trying to use these up as much as I can in this coming year and they'll be decluttered at the end of the year. I don't think I can use them up entirely. I've never done that with a cream lipstick like this, but we'll see, we'll give it the college try. They're nice and hydrating, they're beautiful shades, um, but they won't be in the next inventory. These two have been around a while, the Too Faced Melted Lips, again, discontinued, right better? Uh, but I really enjoy these shades and this formula, so those will stick around again for another year. They still <laughs> work quite well, Butter likes them too. And then, Butter, do you mind? I have this one. This came in my Ulta gift bag. This is from Well People, and it's actually a hydrating balm, but it has a good tint to it. It comes out of a little squeezy tube. I'm counting it in with these products. It's not a gloss. It's not a liquid lip. It's not a bullet lip. It's a cream lipstick as far as I'm concerned. So we at least went down by two in this category, and that is better than nothing. Here are all of my liquid lipsticks. I know what you're thinking. Jessica, how do you still have so many liquid lipsticks? And it's because I still like liquid lipsticks, okay? Everyone just like abandon liquid lipsticks. I'm still here for them. The lasting power cannot be compared. However, I am trying to reduce my liquid lipstick category and work through my collection and try and use some of these items before they dry up and go bad, which I've done a good job of. And I've gotten rid of quite a few old liquid lipsticks in the past year. So last year I was sitting at 27 liquid lipsticks. This year I am at 23. So we are down four liquid lipsticks in this category. No new liquid lipsticks coming in. I've been bringing my older liquid lipsticks into my rolling project pan and trying to use them 10 times, see where their formula is at, see if they are still performing well, and if not, giving them that one last final hurrah of 10 uses, if I can even get 10 uses out of that item before decluttering it and moving it out of my collection. So I'm gonna continue to do that through this coming year, especially focusing on my Kat Von D liquid lipsticks, as well as my remaining Jeffree Star and Joseph Colors. These ones over here are all quite new. Let me go ahead and go through all of these with you. I have six of the Superstay Matte Ink liquid lipsticks. Obviously, I love this formula. It really does last a great amount of time. It's kind of hard to reapply. It's a good drugstore option. And then I have these two remaining from Jeffree Star. This is the shade Rose Matter, and this is the shade Sagittarius, which is a really unique, like grayish purple shade. And I wore this the other day and actually really liked how it looked. So happy to have that one around. This is one of my newest ones of that collection and then i have this one from dose of colors which i also really love this is stone beautiful shade i have two from koki this is the shade i wore on my wedding day and again i just love a hot pink so those are great items from the drugstore as well this one's from galactic it's like a nudie brown terracotta color and this one from loritz see these were both boxy charm items so don't know anything about this brand really galactic is it is that even around anymore 
I don't know. We also have this one from Sephora. This is one of their cream lip stains, so not really a true liquid lip, but for me, it serves a purpose of a liquid lip. And this one is quite affordable, so I'm kind of lumping that on the drugstore side. And then these are all from KVD, and this is back when Kat Von D was with KVD that I purchased all these. So they are old, but I've swatched them, I've smelt them, and they still work well enough for me. I especially love these nude shades. The bold ones don't quite have the lasting power that I want a liquid lipstick to have. Like they're not as good as the Superstay and other formulas I've tried, but they're still beautiful shades. They're quite unique from the rest of the shades in my collection. And I'm going to continue to use them as much as I can while they are still good. Overall, reducing by four is great and hopefully will reduce even more in the coming year. I'm definitely not gonna purchase any liquid lipsticks. I can promise you that. Here are my eyeshadow primers. Last year I had two eyeshadow primers and this year we are still at two. This is the same eyeshadow primer I had last year from Milani. I'm gonna try and use this one up this year. It's nothing special in my opinion. I know it gets some hype, but I prefer the formula from Ulta. So that's what I will be repurchasing when this is empty. Hopefully at this time, hopefully sometime this year. I've never emptied an eyeshadow primer before, so wish me luck on that one. And this is a repurchase. I finished the NYX glitter primer I had last year. Love this. I use it every day for my shimmer shades on my eyelid, and I repurchased this one. A nice shiny holographic packaging for you. And I'm happy to say this category stayed the same, and I foresee it continuing to stay the same. Next we have my potted single eyeshadows. Last year I had 10, this year I believe we have the exact same 10. I haven't purchased any, I guess I haven't decluttered any. I'm not quite sure where these are even at. Maybe some of them are a little dried out, could be moved out, but I'm gonna save that for my projects over the next year, see if I can pull some of these in, you know, get some use on them, see how the formula is doing and declutter them as I see fit. So. Let me turn off the light for you so you can see them better. Yeah, that's probably better. And I hope to see this category continue to decrease, if not stay the same, as we continue tracking my makeup inventory over the next couple of years. Next, I have these loose pigments. Last year, I had the exact same two in my inventory. So this one is from Your Minerals Sweden. Just like kind of like a brownie shimmer pigment. It's really pretty. It's called Brown Hypnotic and I'm trying to reach for this. This is another one that is neglected, but it's gonna come into a project at some point. It's really pretty. I'm not decluttering it because I want to use it. It's really nice. This one is from Kaylin and it is their eye polish. It has like this little like wand that comes out and I've been using this on my lower lash line just to add some sparkle on my everyday looks and it's been working really well for that. So I'm gonna continue to try to reach for this in the next year, get more use on it and reevaluate next year. It reminds me of those MAC pigments where it will last you forever and ever and ever. They're so small, they don't take up much space. We'll continue to hold on to them and track them in my inventory. Eyeshadow pencils, wow, what a controversial category, at least in my heart and in my mind. I had four last year and this year I have three. I was able to completely use up the Laura Mercier Caviar Stick and I'm left with these three remaining from NYX. So these are actually quite old, but I just can't bear to get rid of them. I don't know why. These two are always on the chopping block. This like mocha shimmer shade and then this green shimmer shade. And then this one is the milk one. So it's the white color. This is great as a eye primer when you're using bright colors. This is the only one I use. These two, I'm not reaching for. I'm not reaching for this as like a green base. I'm not reaching for this as a brown base. I would like to try and change that though. So these are also candidates to come into projects in the next year, hoping to get some use on them finally. I say this every year now, I think. We'll see if I can do it. And if not, I hope that I can at least gain the courage to declutter these at some point if I'm not going to use them. But at least our category went down one. Here's what I'm calling my glitter eyeshadow category. Again, I have kind of weird ways of grouping things in my mind, but this is the best way that made sense to me. So I have two of these glitter shadows from e.l.f. They're both in their silver shade, but one's like the silver silver, one's the holographic silver. This is a great dupe for the Stila glitter shadows. They do dry out kind of quickly, but so do the Stila ones, and at least you're not wasting as much money that way. This is from Cover FX. It's a little more of a, shadow like a true shadow than these other ones in this collection that's okay i use it in the same purpose basically to add a little shimmer and 
shine to an eyeshadow look. This is more of a body glitter, but I can use it near my eyes. It's probably not eye safe. This again is from the Elsa Frozen 2 collection, and it's a really beautiful chunky glitter and really fun to play with. It's been with me on quite a few adventures and donned quite a few ladies. So I've gotten good use on this product and it will continue to have fun with me over the next year. And lastly, I have this little quad from ColourPop. These are all pressed glitters or kind of like jelly glitters and um, they have four different shades and this is just so convenient to throw into a little party bag to top off any eyeshadow look. I've gotten some good use on this as well. It has a little bit of fallout but hey if you're wearing glitter it's okay to have a little bit of fallout on your face. I mean glitter on your face there are worse things in the world in my opinion. I like a little sparkle here and there. Last year this category had six and now it has five because I was able to declutter that Stila kitten shade from last year. It was quite dried up. So didn't bring in anything new and reduced in this category by one. These are all of the loose glitters in my inventory. I had five last year and the same five this year. I almost decided to remove this category from my inventory as it's not like true makeup. It's more of like special occasion makeup, makeup that I use on special effects looks or Halloween looks like not like my typical beauty looks, but I decided to just go ahead and include it, keep it the same as last year, because I do want to reach for some glitter more in the coming years. You know, have some fun with my makeup, do some more creative looks, and motivate myself to actually use these items in my inventory. So this category is staying the same, and I hope it will continue to stay the same. Loose glitter is the last thing I need to be bringing into my life at this point. I might even try and use these on like a craft project or in some more creative way that's not makeup. But for now, we'll keep that number the same, five and five. I've started getting into hydro liners over the past couple years and I'm having so much fun with them. I'd like to get more shades and I'd love to play with these more. These are all from Suva Beauty. They're all water activated. This is their white one, Space Panda. I have their split pans. This is Doodle D. It's a hot pink and a neon orange. And then I have this split pan in Doodle Doo, I believe it's called, and it is their neon blue and neon yellow, which you can mix together to make other shades mixed with the white. They glow under black light, which is really fun. I've loved playing with these. They've been great for Halloween. We use them in quite a few Halloween looks in the past two years, I think. So love those and those numbers have stayed the same from three to three. However, I might bring in some more. We shall see. I need to use these ones that I have first. And last thing I'm gonna throw in here is just like a little miscellaneous category. I don't think this fits in with anything else. So we're gonna call it miscellaneous. I have this ColourPop freckle pen and it is just that. It is a pen that makes little freckles on your face. That's the idea. It's like not too pigmented. You can kind of like dab it away and it's supposed to create kind of like more natural looking freckles. This was kind of a gimmick, but it's nice to have when you want that effect, which I really do like playing with fake freckles. I think it's kind of adorable and I just need to do it more. So I don't think I had a miscellaneous category last time to compare it to. If I did, I'll put it in the corner there. For now I have one. I don't know if I had anything last year. Here are my single eyeshadow shades all arranged in my Magnetic Z palette. Last year I had 20 single eyeshadow shades in this Z palette and I was able to declutter a couple and not bring any new in. This year I'm down to 16. So these ones down here are all from Sugar Pill, these mattes, which I love. These two here are from Give Me Glow. I have a couple in here mixed, mostly they are Makeup Geek, a couple from ColourPop, and a few other random ones too, like this is from Urban Decay, and I have some from Ofra in there. I think that's pretty much it. And I am not planning on getting any more singles. I know there's a lot of like fun indie singles, like it'd be fun to check out Cleona singles. I've heard so much about them, but I'm really trying to use my eyeshadow collection that I have, although those would be kind of fun accessory shades. Oh gosh, I'm like talking myself into it as we go. No, we went down four items. Let's continue that trend. And we'll count these as 16 items this year. These right here are my small eyeshadow palettes, six pans or less. So last year I had eight in my collection and this year I have the exact same eight. So I didn't bring in any small ones. However, I didn't declutter any. I'm fine with that. These are all well loved in my collection. Well, most of them, but we'll continue just to kind of see where they stand in my inventory, see if they still have a place as I bring them through different projects that I'm doing in my, you know, makeup journey. This is from Viseart, their Amethyst palette. I 
have this one from L'Oreal, the Avant Garde Azure palette, which I love. Just hit a pan on it recently. I have the Elf Jalapeno palette. These four from ColourPop, I have two of the five pan palettes from ColourPop. This is Rumor Has It, and this is High Society. I think these are both limited edition, at least. I mean, you know, everything in ColourPop is these days, but you can't get those ones anymore. Or this one, this is their um, Hello Kitty collection in their little pineapple packaging. It's so cute. This palette's called Pineapple Cake. I just, oh, I love Hello Kitty. And then I got one of their quads. This is Sorbet. Oh, wow, here comes the sun. <laughs> my lighting. Sorry, everybody. I kind of like it. Beautiful palette. I need to use this one more. It's just so similar to so many shades I have. I don't know why I bought this, but I was swept away one day. And then lastly, I have this little travel palette, the Tartiste Pro to Go palette. And as many of you probably know, this is my pan of that palette for this year. I'm trying to use up this palette entirely in the coming year. So this will not be in my 2024 makeup inventory. So hopefully we'll go down by at least one in this category, if not more, as I continue to use my collection. Here are all of my eyeshadow palettes currently in my collection. Last year at this time I had 24 eyeshadow palettes. I've accumulated a few over the past year, but I've also decluttered some, keeping my number exactly the same. I still have 24 eyeshadow palettes, which I'm pretty proud of myself for at least keeping this number consistent. First I have this one from Makeup Geek. This is the Manny MUA palette. The collaboration with him, really like that palette, need to use it more. I have three ColourPop palettes and I'm pretty proud I've kept my collection to just those three. This is the ColourPop Frozen 2 Elsa palette, the Child palette, and their She's a Rainbow palette. With all ColourPop's releases, I think just three in my collection is admirable. Patting myself on the back over here. The only item I will ever own from Morphe, this is the Jaclyn Hill palette. It's a great staple palette, not my favorite anymore, but it has a place in my collection still. I have two from Too Faced, the Sweet Peach palette, one of my all-time favorites, as well as the Chocolate Gold palette. Also love that one, such beautiful shimmers in there. This one from Alomar Cosmetics was a boxy charm palette and I almost decluttered it this year, but there's one shade in there I just absolutely love and is quite unique, so it's sticking around, at least for now. I have my Gimme Glow Pastel Dreams palette. Love that palette, but need to reach for it more. There's some fun shades to play with in there. My La Roca Mega Pro 2 palette, that is my other Pan Those palette for the year. I'm trying to hit Pan in every shade of that palette, so I think after I do that, I'll be ready to declutter it for the next inventory. I have the Kat Von D Shade and Light Eye palette. This one also is on the borderline of being decluttered over and over again, but for now it's sticking around. It does come in handy, especially when I just want like mattes and contour shades. I reach for it a lot when I'm doing like Halloween makeup looks, so I, I keep it around for that. I have four ABH palettes right now, the ABH Jackie Ina palette, the Sultry palette, Soft Glam, and I just recently picked up the Norvina palette. I love the ABH formula when it was this. I miss the good days of ABH. I'm happy to have that time of ABH as a big part of my eyeshadow collection. I have my BH Cosmetics collection up here. I have the Take Me Back to Brazil, the Shanixo Remix palette, and the Lost in Los Angeles palette. This one I just keep around for color when I need it. This one I love, love Shan, love this palette. And this one I just picked up this year. It has such beautiful pastels in it. Really, really like that palette. Glad I brought it in. I have two from Natasha Denona. I have the bronze palette. And then I recently picked up the My Dream palette. That was a gift for Christmas and I love it. It's a great addition. It kind of replaced my Modern Renaissance. I feel like it has similar vibes, but better. And then I have two from Huda Beauty. Love Huda Beauty's formula. I am happy to have gotten the Rose Quartz palette recently. I just love the Mercury Retrograde palette so much that I wanted to try more of her palettes and that was a great addition to my collection as well. A little bit repetitive as far as shades go, but you know, the overall experience is just amazing and the packaging is stunning. I have my Ciate Glitter Storm palette here. That one is not new, that's returning from the previous year. And then the last new palette I haven't talked about yet is from Nomad Cosmetics, and that is their Haunted Europe palette. And I'm so proud to say that this palette came in as part of a free gift from Nomad Cosmetics. Actually, I believe it was Jen B Beauty from Instagram who follows me that nominated me as a Nomad Starfish. I guess they were honoring teachers at that time. and. She so kindly and thoughtfully nominated me as a makeup creator and teacher, and I got to choose any palette I wanted to from the Nomad website, and I chose this one. It was actually around the Halloween season, and I just loved these shades. They really called to me, and look how cool that 
holographic packaging is. So even though this is new in my collection, it's not something that I spent money on. And I haven't even tried it yet. You can see those shades have not even been swatched. I've just been adoring it from afar and longingly staring at those shades, not even deigning to stick my finger in them. But the day will come. Maybe I'll film a look with that in the next Halloween season. I know that's a long ways away, but hey, we're planning ahead here. So there you have it. 24 to 24. I brought in one, two, three, four, five new palettes into my inventory, but we still were able to break even and that is great. That concludes my makeup inventory, comparing the categories from last year to this year. Last year, using these categories, I had a total of 241 makeup items in my makeup collection at the beginning of 2022. And counting them in the same way, this year I have made it all the way down to 220 makeup items. So I reduced my makeup inventory by 21 items, which feels great. I was hoping to get closer to 200, but I think 21 is a great jump and maybe I can get below 200 in the next coming year. However, I have rearranged a few of my categories. So separating out from the face palettes and blush palettes, the individual highlighters, blushes, and bronzers, my total number comes up to 236 makeup items. So I'll be using that number as a comparison in the next inventory video we do, maybe mid-year, but most likely at the beginning of next year. That all being said, I decided to add one other makeup category to my inventory, and that is my nail polish. So let me get those for you. Now, most people don't include nail polishes in their makeup inventory. It's not truly makeup. However, I really want to work on reducing my nail polish collection, going through the different shades, seeing what's still good, seeing what I still like, what finishes I still enjoy, what shades I still enjoy, and try and winnow this category down over the next year. I am panning my first ever nail polish. It's this Sally Hansen one right here in Persuade. And I think I could definitely get solid use on other shades in this inventory as well. So where it stands now, I have 39 nail polishes. I would love to get that down at least by maybe 10 in the next year. And if I add those 39 items in with my other makeup items, my number sits at 275 total items with the nail polish. So that's what I'll be comparing my number to in my next inventory video. And with that, I'm going to say goodbye here. I hope you enjoyed seeing all of my makeup and even some of my nail care in this video. I'll hope you come along with me this year as I go through all of my different project pans, try and resist bringing new makeup into my inventory and focus on using the items that I already have. If you're into that kind of thing, I definitely invite you to join me as a subscriber here on my channel. Give this video a thumbs up. Let the YouTube algorithm know that you enjoyed it. I hope you're doing really well and that 2023 is treating you kind so far and I cannot wait to see you in my next video which might come up here another suggested one for you check it out take care and goodbye